All right, good evening, members of QFS Podcast. We have in the house tonight Miss Selwa Khalifa and Mr. Fahad Al Obedli, directors, producers extraordinaire. If you guys want to introduce yourself, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much for hosting us. Uh, my name is Selwa Khalifa, and I'm a struggling filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fahad Al Obedli, uh, film director, fashion designer. I'm really happy to be here today. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. If you guys just give me a little bit of a brief backstory as to how you found yourself in the film industry in Doha and any projects that you've completed and anything that you have coming up soon. Fahad, um, you can go ahead straight. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, like, it was really funny like how I started like getting involved with films. Like, I signed up to a documentary lab. Uh, with DFI and because uh, I wanted to be uh, I wanted to do fashion films so I'm like let me try documentary first and find my way to fashion films and uh, me and Salwa we produce uh, Ghurba together the short films that's about uh, conflict about identity and uh, where is home and uh, we worked together since then we produced like Bist film mm -hmm. with uh, actually support of uh, Qatar Film Society Shout out to us. Thank you very much, Fahad. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. And we are working uh, in November to uh, film uh, the play. Um, it's independent of other short films, yeah. Okay, great. And s thank you so much, Fahad. Now, Selwa, w Selwa Khalifa, if you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and how you got into film. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've always uh, was fascinated by films and going to cinema and uh, I think it started back in uni. Um, we had uh, uh, it was like film course 101, and uh, back there I didn't like decided my major yet, so I took that course, and um, it was a really interesting course about like history of films and everything. And then uh, there was like this assignment by the end of the, c the semester that we need to make a film, and it was a very small like short film, and uh, I remember just loving the whole idea of making the film, thinking about it, filming it. And, yeah, I guess this is how it started. Okay, great, guys. I have a couple questions, if you bear with me. Um, the first question that I'd like to ask you is, film has many different aspects to it. It's got many different areas in which you can specialize. Um, you guys have had quite a few experiences working with different projects. Out of all the different talents and all the different people that are involved in producing films, what position or what role do you like playing the best and why? Oh, that's that's a hard one. Um, to be honest, I've worked in a lot of local films here in Qatar. Um, every time, like someone tells me about a film, I just volunteer or just call the person in charge and try to get involved. But uh, I see more. I see myself more as a scripty. As a, um, um, I love I love to deal more with the, the creativity side, or to deal with the script and acting and. Um, uh, cinematography, so yeah, I see myself more working in that. So you're area. still in the process of dabbling within each specific, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. field and really kind of learning every aspect that you possibly can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. How about you, Fahad? Where do you see yourself and what do you enjoy doing best? I mean, are you a director, producer? Do you enjoy writing films? I know that you've had quite a few films showcased. Inside Out is one of them that DFI helped produce. And with the assistance of QFS, we did a couple of other productions that were really great. Already won some awards. Congratulations on that, guys. <laughs> but Fahad, where do you see yourself? Um, it's really <laughs> um, maybe like because I, like as I mentioned before, like I, I'm really planning to be a fashion filmmaker. Um, so when it comes to the area, I see myself like in director now but I really want to ex to see like how I can how I will do when I, I, I pour it camera because I'm really keen to like learn more about it and like film my own films I think this because it's really hard for me to communicate what is in my head mm -hmm. as a director so I think if I operate the camera too it will be easier to achieve the exact visuals that I'm trying to achieve so yeah within this area is like directing mm -hmm. and operating the camera like that's know. awesome 
film is a language and you know we've got all different skill sets and different experiences and it's a matter of really verbalizing that visual language and communicating to the audience I've asked a lot of the guests that have come on QFS podcast where they draw their inspiration for some of their productions a lot of people have told me that it's personal stories a lot of people you know use the situations in their current life that you know help them develop awesome stories can we get some kind of backstory as to like for instance your last film inside out what was the reasoning behind that and you know did it turn out the way that you had wanted to originally when it was on paper if i had uh, for inside out like the way it started actually it was like my own film script like it was like about me having conflict with finding my own spot in my society my the small society at home and um Selva she had that like similar script about it but like where is home so so it was more uh, bigger scale um so and then our mentor uh, he saw that we sh- we could join the two project together and mm-hmm. this way it would be like more like combined forces basically exactly. and you know because you guys had very similar paths or very similar ideas yes the same conflict okay how did your script develop from the point of idea original thought and you obviously put a lot of effort into pre-production and writing it multiple versions how did it evolve over time what were some of the consequences or difficulties that you had to really kind of oversee um, it's funny that you mentioned that. I mean, I remember back in uni, my professor used to tell me that we make films three times. Uh, the first time we write it, and the second time uh, we film it, and the third time we uh, when we edit it. So, uh, actually, th- I mean, the main idea goes to like through three different processes, and each process changing it changes it completely. Um, yeah, I guess with Inside Out, we imagined something a bit more uh, broad. I mean, we wanted to involve more people to talk about uh, their experience uh, about um, growing up in Qatar and how they felt about uh, being an expat or uh, feeling this uh, alienation uh, where they live. But uh, what ended up happening, uh, the story became more personal about my experience and Fahad's experience uh, here. So yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't planned to make it very personal about me or about Fahad, but uh, in a way it was. Uh, yeah, this is how it ended up. It ended up being very personal. Very okay, great. Um, a lot of filmmakers, a lot of experienced directors, a lot of people that have been in the industry for a long time always say that personal stories are the best, and. There's an old saying that goes back in Hollywood, really to the early days of film. If you want to send a message, use the post office. Don't try to send a message through film. Although the films and the messages that you guys have tried to convey are extremely personal and extremely relevant to the community here in Doha. Was that your original intention to basically set out with a, a message that you wanted to portray? Uh, me personally, I disagree with the idea of message. I mean, when it comes to art, when it comes to cinema films, I feel like uh, it's all mean of expression. I mean, when we did Inside Out, um, I was go- going through personal stuff and I was about to leave Doha for a while. So to me, it was just uh, a way to express how I felt about uh, this country, to express about how I felt in that particular moment. And putting it into a film, it was just about maybe sharing how I felt with people. And I guess uh, Fahad agrees with me that most of the films that we work on, we, that we work on, uh, it's just uh, personal stories, experience that uh, we feel we want to share with others. We want to, um, yeah, we want to. You want to bring together a community yeah. of like-minded people because, because the film, like, it's the best media, media to communicate feelings. Like feelings, sometimes it. It mislead you to somewhere, but like in films, I think the best platform, the best stage to put um, story together, and uh, people really relate to uh, visuals. Like when you show them some visuals, they relate to it. But like mm-hmm. when it comes to writing, and you, s- you read something, it's uh, like it's like let's say books and films. What's the difference between them? Books give you the ability to 
go beyond the mm-hmm. th- threatening your own interpretation of the words as use your imagination exactly you know. but when it comes to films it's a bit so direct to the point but at the same time if you are creative you can create a content that actually will relate with any topic mm-hmm. and anyone watch it like I, I could watch someone dying and I can have different audience like one he will say oh that it's the best ending and someone will say that the worst ending so mm-hmm. you get many different criticisms um for my third question, it actually has to center around criticism. And how do you guys prep yourself or develop your skill set? Because in our industry, you have to have really thick skin and you have to be able to take criticism on from all fronts. Not only, you know, from a customer if you're creating a corporate film, but, you know, from your own productions. What are some of the tools and techniques that you utilize to help deal with criticism? I try to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> Because the thing is, to me, I mean, once you see the film, you've seen everything that I can possibly say. So I hate it when uh, people come to me after the screen and ask me, but what did you mean exactly? Because, um, I mean, what I meant is I made this film to express how, how I feel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, to be honest, I get a, uh, I mean, uh, I try not to get too defensive about uh, my film and about uh, defending my ideas. But I guess, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of it. You need to... Um, be able to defend your not only defend Mm -hmm. but I guess you need to be so sure about what you're saying uh, so sure about uh, your content so um, later on you'll be equipped when people come to you with questions what do you mean, why this, why that okay yeah, like I agree with Salwa, like when it comes to these things like actually like I I love to give them the space to criticize anything because that will actually help me to like really think about my next project, you know, like to be prepared and stuff like that. So I never see like it's bad comment or something that's mm-hmm. always just an opinion and people or human being allowed to express the way they want to express it and I never take it personally. I just like say this is the way they think and that's it. Okay. Now with The question of drawing inspiration, a lot of people have many different aspects of their life and where they draw inspiration. You know, some people use their family, some people use their work, their social life, their friends around them. For each of you, where do you guys find inspiration? What are some of the techniques that you utilize to help develop ideas and, you know, what makes a good film in your mind? Uh, That's a tough one. Um, well, I'm, I'm I'm still trying to find like um, I, I struggle with this especially um, when in the process when I'm developing an idea or a script I do struggle to find what you call inspiration. I guess it just it comes to you. I mean, it comes to you. It just hits you. I mean, once you ask for it, once you uh, put yourself in that uh, mood that okay, I'm allowing all the creativity and all the inspiration. And then when t- once you open up yourself that way, everything around you can inspire you, whether it's films, whether it's people around you, personal stories. But to be honest, uh, my own method is writing, yes. Okay, so you go writing. through multiple drafts and... Yeah, just write, I mean. Just write. Uh, I use the stream of consciousness, just write whatever that comes to my mind with, the, with no filters, with no restraints, just write whatever that comes to me. And then from that, uh, I find very interesting mm-hmm, ideas, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I'm assuming it's similar to Fahad in, in many ways because you guys are very like-minded in the way that you guys oh, approach Fahad film. Fahad <laughs> Fahad Fahad's got write. a... B- <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm more like... Um, I get sp- inspired by everything. Sometimes I could get inspired by like having coffee and there's an argument between two people in front of me having another coffee there. Um, a film, a book, an action, a cat moving, everything like, but like my brain work really crazy how to link all the scenes I have seen together and create something out of it. Um, even like uh, like my upcoming new project, the play, uh, the way it came, it was really interesting. Like I never thought of it, I never like plan it. It just like I combine scenes I have seen from movies, from books I have reading, or actions even. And actually it's really funny because it came out of the uh, la- latest workshop in DFI. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, the original script did like uh, I submit to this workshop like the mentor they are not, not sure about it so and, and actually in one day I came up with the other one the play and I decided to do it with out, outside of the mm -hmm. workshop because it's it's need it d doesn't serve the scope of work mm -hmm. within the workshop but okay yeah now with your development process um, do you feel that being a procrastinator works best for you to where you l wait to the absolute last moment and you're under immense stress to develop an idea and then just flow of consciousness happens or does it help you better to develop a film over a longer period of time to where there's less anxiety attached to that if you asked me six months ago I would say pressure <laughs> okay. but lately I'm, I'm really trying my best like to take my time and things because you know like it's it's I, it, I treat it as a jewelry mm -hmm. Uh, I touch it once a while mm -hmm. and see how the outcome of it in the end. Go um, back and forth to it and exactly. make some tiny tweaks. Okay, exactly, cool. Yeah. Great. I personally think that um, starting up, Yanni, when I used to, when I made my first and second films, there was always like this timeline or deadline. I think this is very helpful because in the beginning, uh, you need some sort of a timeline, you need some sort of a, uh, whether it's a workshop or someone to push you to, to get it done. But uh, as you move to your uh, third and fourth and fifth uh, film, you try to come up with. And now you you uh, at the first you come you're trying to create your language, you're trying to create your, you're trying to find yourself within the film and see try different uh, things. But once you um, finish that uh, uh, period, you start to think about okay, خلاص I want to do let's say horror films or I want to do thrillers. So you spend you start spending more time thinking mm -hmm. about about it so now do you guys um there's an old quote that says the best filmmakers are also the best film watchers in the sense that people watch films religiously almost and use them as instru in instruments of inspiration what are some of the best pictures that you feel have developed you as an artist and why what was the reasoning behind it so many films i mean uh it's a tough one. Okay, I thought it would be easy for you because we have the same film. We get inspired by human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And like for me, like human, like I'm, I'm, I'm into documentaries. Like okay. I'm really into documentaries and short films is my thing. It's like I think it's very creative how you can put all the ideas together and like really short. I think this is the challenge more than a feature. Anyone can do a feature, but mm -hmm. not anyone can do short. Mm -hmm. I believe it that hardly. So. But human was like something really touch us because uh, visually the storyline, the effort behind it, it was really outstanding. And um, uh, even like there is a, an exhibition about his film that actually kept his legacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, human. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite. But I have to admit that um, uh, Chris Marker. Uh, Sunless Sun. Mm -hmm. I believe this film is a turning point to me. I mean, I mean, after watching that film, it hit me that I definitely want to do this. And I always go back to that film because I feel the sensibility and um, uh, the genuinity of the film. It's so honest, it's so genuine, it's so uh, effortless. And it's a uh, human story that ev that everybody can share with and experience. Exactly. It's a universal tale, basically. It is, it is. And, uh, th and the way it was made, I mean, I always go back to it. Every time I'm making a film, I go back to it and try, try to remind myself, you know, I want to make something as honest and as uh, truthful as this, as uh, Chris Marker uh, work. So yeah, it's uh, definitely I always draw inspiration from. Okay, cool. A lot of the members at QFS always have this question. Um, you know, QFS is comprised of many different skill levels, from professionals to amateurs to students. And a lot of questions that we get asked quite a few times is how to break into Doha's film scene, how to become part of the industry, and how to leave a mark that you know says something about you as a person and as a professional. What are some of the suggestions that you can give, you know, a first-time filmmaker that's never shot anything that wants to make a name for him or herself? How to start, and where I to start. I think, like, when it comes to start, you need to start 
by identifying what exactly you want to do, like which kind of terms you like to do and stuff like that, because that will make things easier, like how to walk through your journey in the film industry. And like, I would say start with your own like smartphones, mm -hmm. like just record things and mm -hmm. see how that turned out for you. Like, um, I do remember I filmed a lot of things like with my phone, like with my phone, like doesn't make sense and doesn't, but mm -hmm. like through this content, like I found like, I really want to do a story talking about people. Okay, so stick with the human stories then. Yeah. And with regards to the avant-garde market, the people, you know, because I've got a lot of students and a lot of people who come and say, I want to make an art film and I want to really test out, you know, the visual expressionism. And are you guys in full support of that idea or do you suggest stay more towards the human and, you know, stay safe? No, no, I, I'd say especially when you're starting, I mean, I wish I told my, I mean, I wish someone told me that earlier, but when you start, just start with the genre or the thing that you love the most. If you want to do avant-garde, experimental art, whatever, from just start with it. Don't don't let the, the market or people taste around you limit you. Just go, it's, because uh, the thing is, if you, if you do something that you don't, f your heart is not full about it, it's not going to be honest, it's not going to be true, but uh yeah, if you invest in the, the right genre from the beginning, yeah, I think it's the best. Okay, so basically solidify your, you know, your thoughts before you attempt it and everything. Yeah. Okay, now with Doha's market still being very, very young and, you know, there's a lot of competition with the corporate market. There's a lot of young aspiring filmmakers out there especially with the support of Doha Film Institute and, you know, Northwestern, a lot of institutes that have really put forth a lot of attention. What are some of the pictures that you feel resonate the most with the community here in the sense that, you know, Qatar is a very special market in the sense that you have to make culturally appropriate pieces. What are some of the ideas that you have that may be applicable here and why? I know it's a bit it's it's a bit of a uh, loose ended question and yeah, I apologize yeah. for that. It's um, there's like three or four answers in there. So yeah. some of the films that basically that you've wanted to make that you have on the pipeline. Yeah. I mean I have a story. I mean I have a film coming up soon. It's called The Highway. Mm -hmm. It's um it's a very I think it will uh, resonate or will do good in Qatar because it's a very it's a kind of magical realism about this uh, mysterious girl that rooms the desert and she finds um, strangers and uh, she asks them for a ride to the highway and through her encounter with uh, each of the strangers she comes to know about their background and and yeah eventually she ends up killing them. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit like it's a bit like a thriller um yeah magical realism thing I think it, it does good because um, um, I think to me uh, me personally I'm so uh, I'm so done with doing like social dramas mm -hmm. to talk about uh, all the commentaries kind of commentaries yeah. about the society and I think yeah I think there is a space for creativity for imagination and fantasy and I would love to see more people in Qatar uh, or uh, in the region making more kind of a genre films mm -hmm. because I think I think we get it. I mean, we. we I mean, if, if if I need a social commentary, I can just turn it into the local news. Then right, it's very. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Um, back to the idea of drawing inspiration, and this is based upon purely on your disciplines and your experience in direct. Like with Fahed, um, you are a dedicated and recognized fashion designer within the community here. Yeah. How are you able to use the tools that you learned through fashion design and then apply them? Because fashion design is very broad in the sense that it's, you know, it's a 3D portrayal of art. How do you utilize some of the skill set that you learn there and then apply it to filmmaking? Um, I think, like, when it comes to this, like, I think the way I treat, like, let's say, like, when you, cr you create your collection mm -hmm. in fashion, the first question is like, who will wear it? Mm -hmm. This is the first thing that comes to your head. Uh, who will be my audience? How? And then through this, like, I, I, I take my journey to create a collection. 
it's the same concept when it comes to from side who I'm talking to mm -hmm. like who's my audience who is like uh, who will watch the film so I think the same the same process I'm applying in fashion I apply it in a, in the films and uh, it's more about like how I want people to feel because when I design something uh, like the end up product I want to the me immediately I'm gonna go to the person like how you feel now mm -hmm. the same concept as well in the film like how you feel after you saw the film right. like, you know, th like for me it's all about like to make people feel good so um, yeah I think like kind of the same concept okay so it's, it's, it's basically your first question that you would ask yourself is who's your audience and who, 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 who is the end up like the product would end up with whom right, yeah, right. and how do we feel about it right I just want to add what I love about Fahad because uh, he's coming from fashion background and he's very insightful when it comes to like choosing colors and uh, choosing the visuals I mean I guess uh, at least for me when it, when it comes to me I'm, I get a bit more sucked up to about the content and the script and what I mean and sometimes I really forget that uh, the, the visuals, I mean, the, the, the outcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's what really cool about Fahad, he always reminds me about uh, the visual. It's all that matters at the end of the day. I mean, no one going to know what it was inside my head when I was thinking about the character. But, of course, through colors and through uh, visualization of the, of the, the scene, uh, I can express uh, what I mean. And I guess this is what was cool about Fahad. I mean, he's really good when it comes to visuals. Mm, thank you. You, you guys are a really excellent team when you produce and direct a lot of these films. Um, for my final question, I know that we're running a little loose today. I apologize for all the members listening. Um, you have got a lot of projects coming up. Yep. And you've got a lot of things. And I can see you guys are like wide-eyed with a lot of ideas and everything. <laughs> it's really excellent to see someone so passionate. Um what are some of the social difficulties in the sense that without, you know, pointing anything directly, you know, a lot of people say that how can we make Doha easier to inspire more filmmakers, to inspire younger amateur students to get out there and produce films? A lot of people have told me that it's, you know, it's the permits. A lot of yeah. people have told me that it's, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Permits is it's really not big, easy, uh, yeah. big uh, thing. Like wherever you go, you need to have permit to apply, and you need to go through a long process to get it. Yeah, so no, that actually, it's like, difficult. you feel tired of it, and mm -hmm. like, okay, I don't want to do the film anymore. <laughs> By the time you get, you know, through the first step, you're exhausted already. Exactly. Exhausted, yeah. and plus, like, like everyone working in the film industry, they have day job. Mm -hmm. So the only time you can work with them after I don't. working out, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're <laughs> she's currently between jobs. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, and this, and this actually like uh, creates a conflict because if, like, let's say in Belgium and in, in map design city, they they have um, a fund for filmmakers like okay. to to have like every month payment like to to survive. Mm -hmm. And that actually will allow him to like do the f the film they want to mm -hmm. do and to grow as a filmmakers, and that doesn't doesn't really apply here. You need mm -hmm. to have a job here to right. to really like live day like month by month right. and pay the b bills and stuff like that. Responsibility unfortunately always um, intervenes with our capacity to do our artistic creative expressions. Mm -hmm. But what I love so much is that people that are truly passionate about it, they will get it done regardless. I mean. Mm -hmm. We as filmmakers, and for those of you listening who have been on production teams, there's no such thing as weekends. There's no such <laughs> thing as, you know, seven to three jobs. Yeah. And it's about teamwork. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to really stress on that teamwork. I mean, me and my, uh, me and Fahad, we've been very fortunate to have this group of uh, filmmakers around us. And I think it, it came along yeah, through the years that we developed this kind of network and connections with people who are... Uh, as passionate as us and I think this is crucial anywhere I mean if you want to make films and I don't know where like anywhere you really truly need a group of passionate people around you because uh, filmmaking is teamwork at the end of the day you, you can never do a film by your own you need a village you need uh, an army mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I, <laughs> I, I it, yeah. yeah just to emphasize what Sarwa says like this is what the Qatar Film Society like trying to do and achieve yeah. already already actually uh, like what I love about this project is they are the glue to put all this team together 
and uh, to give us home, to give us platform to meet together, create projects, and um, do something good. Yeah. Thank you guys so very, very much for coming on our fourth edition of QFS Podcasts. We will definitely have you back. For those of you who are interested and want to check out some of your work, we're going to have a full write-up and a profile yeah. showcasing your talents. Are there any links or places that people can see your work, or is it has it not yet been released? Um, I have my website and Vimeo, but I just uh, register in Qatar Film Society and upload all my information and the f- links. And actually, it was really helpful to to find a place where I can like showcase my f- talent and my and show it, sh- fo- like share it with my follow members that I saw in Qatar Film Society. So I think like in in the in my page in Qatar mm-hmm, Film Society mm-hmm. you can see something. Yeah. I have a Vimeo channel, Salwa Al Khalifa. If you look me up, you'll find some of my stuff. Yeah. Most definitely. For those of you listening, we are definitely going to link um, all their work. Uh, we have two very creative people here that we wish them all the best with their futures and how you guys are going to make some great films. Yeah. We're completely confident. And anyone listening out there who wants to support them in any of their projects, please do get in contact. You can write them, and you know they're willing to support you, and you support them as too. Anyways, guys, have a good night. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Thank for you hosting. so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, members, I will see you next week. Cheers. Bye.